At the peak of Eric Cantona's career, his primary sportswear sponsors ran an advert with an image of his face over a St George's cross. The caption read, 66 was a great year for English football. Eric was born. This bit of marketing genius speaks to how deeply the Frenchman is connected to the country in which he arrived at the age of 25. Initial success at Leeds United was followed by a Manchester United career in which he achieved permanent legend status. He won the league at Leeds, of course, and then four more league titles in Manchester, along with two FA Cups, doubles in 94 and 96 alike. And of course, he won the heart of every United fan old enough to remember seeing him play. But why, when he first came to England, was it to play on trial for Sheffield Wednesday? Why was the player who went on to grace the English game, winning the PFA Player of the Year in 94 and the Football Writers Player of the Year in 96, considered with some suspicion by managers and supporters alike, dubbed Mad Eric and Eric the Brat by contemporary tabloids? Why was his initial acquisition by Leeds perceived to be such a high-risk move? The answers to those questions lie in Cantona's tumultuous career in French football. While successful and broadly well regarded at both age groups and adult levels within the national team, his club career in his homeland was full of controversy. It was punctuated with enough evidence of talent to ensure that he was part of the national team picture, but ultimately the kind of settled home that he found in Manchester and the kind of player-manager relationship he eventually found with Sir Alex Ferguson had previously eluded him. He began his career at his local club, SOKLA, a well-regarded youth team in Marseille. From there, he made a bold move, heading 500 miles from home at the age of 15 to the provincial Burgundy town of Auxerre. Headed by legendary French manager Guy Roux, one of the rare pre-Ferguson managers who knew how to get the best out of Cantona, Auxerre were a club on the up, lifted from the doldrums of the lower leagues by Roux's paternal discipline and faith in youth. After a couple of years in the youth team, Cantona made his senior debut in 1983, though it was hardly a permanent breakthrough into the first team setup. In fact, in 1985, he was sent on loan to second division Martigues. He was, broadly speaking, a success there, scoring four goals, more than anyone else during his spell at the club, helping them avoid relegation. However, in a moment of profound foreshadowing, he ended up in an altercation with a fan in the stands. Now that didn't stop Rue from believing in his young starlet though, and Cantona became an integral part of the Auxerre setup. As Matt Galt wrote in these football times in 2015, with Auxerre's long-standing attacking pivot, Andre Zarmak, leaving the club in 1985, Cantona finally had the opportunity to cement a regular starting berth in Rue's attacking lineup. He seized it emphatically, scoring 17 goals as Auxerre once again qualified for Europe by finishing fourth. He won Rookie of the Year in 1987. Cantona stayed in Burgundy until 1988. By this time, he was a bona fide star and the great and good of French football competed for his signature. With a broad palette of options, he chose a return to his hometown, playing for his boyhood idols, or at least his first love until he fell for Johan Cruyff's mesmerizing Ajax, Olympique Marseille. But it wouldn't be a happy return. Marseille were owned by Bernard Tappy, the controversial entrepreneur whose career would be pockmarked by an array of legal issues and ultimately a jail sentence. Tappy and Cantona were a terrible match, and in his excellent biography of the player, Cantona, the rebel who would be king, journalist and author Philippe Auclair suggests the former Marseille owner is high on Cantona's list of most hated people. Eric didn't make things easy for himself. Dropped from the French senior squad, an attempt to arrest him, though poorly communicated, he earned himself a year's ban from the national team for calling the manager something that is best not shared here. His outburst caused him to miss the final of the Under-21s World Cup, particularly painful given that he'd been a crucial part of why France had made it to that final. Then came club controversy as he threw his shirt at the coach after being substituted in a charity match, of all things, against Torpedo Moscow. Tapi asserted that he would not play for Marseille again, although he did, and Cantona began a peripatetic period of loan moves to Bordeaux, Montpellier, where he shared a pitch with Carlos Alderama, got into a dressing room fight that led to a two-game ban and where he also won the Coupe de France, and finally, Nîmes. He did well everywhere he went. He wasn't prolific, but nevertheless well-regarded and certainly capable of scoring important and spectacular goals. But it ended in tears. Incensed over a decision, he hurled the ball at a referee while playing for Nîmes. He was banned from football for a month. Upon hearing the disciplinary panel's decision, he walked up to each of them in turn, called them each an idiot, and left, deciding then and there to retire from football. He was even prepared to pay up his contract with Nîmes, which would have put him in dire financial straits. But it didn't come to that. 
Liverpool had been alerted to his availability but passed. A trial at Sheffield Wednesday might have seen him move to Hillsborough, but when Cantona was only offered a week's extension rather than a contract, he balked. Leeds and Howard Wilkinson had no such doubts though. With a reference from Michel Platini and a recommendation from Gerard Houllier, future Liverpool manager and at that time France's assistant manager, he moved to Ellen Road in November 1991, before notoriously joining Manchester United 13 months later. <laughs> 